everybody, and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Okay, today we're not going to work on any of these exciting cars. We're going to work on this Mazda 5 2009. We've got to change the rear brake pads because they're they're worn out. They don't wear out fast. We've had this car for years, and they're just almost on the metal now. So I've waited as long as I can, and now I've got to change them. I noticed when I'm looking this up on YouTube that there's not a lot of videos on how to do this. So I thought I'd make one, show you guys how to do it. Um, see if there's any problems with doing this, how hard it is. Anyway, so let's get started. Okay, it's always a good idea to chalk your wheels, especially when you're going to be jacking up the rear of the car. Chalk your front wheels, always a good idea. And so let's jack this car up. Okay, always put jack stands underneath your car. So in case this fails, it won't crush you to death because that would make you look like an idiot. And you don't want to look like an idiot, do you? Okay, this is your caliper. And you've got to take this off in order to reach the brake pads and replace them which are inside here. Okay, there's your caliper. There's your disc brake pads inside, one here and one on the inside. Got to remove this caliper in order to replace the pads. The way to do that is to remove two 14 millimeter bolts, one of which is right there. The other one is right there. Remove those two bolts to get the caliper off. Okay, took a little bit of energy. Okay, top bolt is loose. I had to use my uh, my persuader. I just have this little extension. Just have this little extension to a. Uh, to your ratchet, that gives you a bit more leverage. Sometimes that helps. Okay, the two 14 mil bolts are off, but this caliper is not gonna come off until we release the emergency brake, which is keeping this nice and tight to the disc right now. Now with the caliper off the disc, we can see the two individual brake pads. This is what we have to remove and replace. This is the wire retainer which is holding them in place. We've got to remove this and then remove the two disc brake pads. That's one out. Okay, we're just gonna use a big screwdriver just to persuade these off. And that came out pretty easy. So you can see that the brake pad thickness is definitely pretty minimal. Okay, these are my new disc brake pads for the rear of the Mazda 5. Uh, I got it from VAP Auto Parts up here in Vancouver. I paid $50 total with all the taxes in. Now this is Canadian money, because I live in Canada. If you're American watching this, you're gonna pay a lot less a lot less but these are ceramic pads not the cheapest but certainly not the most expensive I think fine for a Mazda 5 in my opinion comes with new wire retainers that's gonna replace this wire retainer I believe and there's the pads okay you can see the new ones beside the old ones you can see how thick the pad is when they're brand new. How thin this old rusty junk one is. Rusty old no good stuff. Brand new good great stuff. Comes with another new wire retainer to replace this old one and the old one. Okay the next problem is the piston. There's your piston that's come out gradually as your brake pads have worn. The piston has moved out further and further to keep it in contact with your disc brake 
disk service. So this has to be put back in. Now some vehicles just requires you to press it back in with pressure, which I've done before in other vehicles. But this particular one, as you can see from the two holes, requires you to rotate it back into its bore to leave room for the thicker pads of the new ones you're going to have to put this piston back where it belongs back in its bore it's about as far out as it's going to go right now now hopefully that's not too hard to do so you're going to use a pair of needle nose pliers there are special tools that make work this for you but i'm hoping that my needle needle nose pliers sorry i can't talk I'm hoping that my needle nose pliers will be able to rotate this back into its position. Let's see if it can. I started getting concerned about having to be able to do this. Okay. As you can see, this piston has to be rotated and pushed as it goes in. Now you can try and do that with a pair of needle nose pliers that will fit into these two little holes here, but you can't apply enough pressure that way. So I came up with this sort of contraption to apply pressure as the piston is rotated. Now I had this in my toolbox. You may be able to get it somewhere. Uh, there are professional tools that will apply pressure this way, but basically this is a wheel puller and when you rotate this, that applies pressure. It's braced up against this part of the caliper. And then I rotate the piston with my channel pliers. I shall demonstrate with the help of my assistant. This is Liam, say hi. Hi. Okay. Liam is gonna turn this slowly as I turn the piston. Okay, let's go. I'm turning. Liam is turning, we're applying pressure and the piston is steadily going down. It's kind of a jury rig way of doing it, but every other way I tried did not work. Uh, it's very, rather difficult. You gotta be careful with the channel lock pliers because you don't want them to wreck the rubber housing. Anyway, that's gonna get the piston all the way in. I'm gonna do that on the other side too after I finish this one. That will allow room for the new brakes, disc brake pads to fit in their position. Another thing to remember, as you move the piston back into its bore, uh, it's going to actually be pushing brake fluid back up through the lines, back up to your reservoir. So you wanna make sure that your reservoir is not overfilled because then it could actually spill out the top of your reservoir. Okay, so now that we've got the piston all the way in, which is the hardest part of this job, we, um, we of course have the outer bracket installed and we're gonna put on the inner brake pad, disc brake pad first. This is the one that has the little wires attached on top. That's gonna to keep uh, some tension on it. You sort of just sort of get it down here, like so, maneuver it into its little slots, which it will go after some difficulty. It will go after some incredible difficulty. This is not, why can't they make things easier? Okay, we got it, we got it. Make sure those spring clips are right tight up against the top. The first disc brake pad is in. Now, this is the outer brake disc brake pad. This sort of slides in and then up. Slides in and up. Slides in and up, up, and it's up. Then, let's see if this will fit over the disc itself. Yes, yes, it does. Okay, there we go. Now we put our wire retainer in, and we put our bolts on the back, and this side will be done. We put in the wire retainer, we put in one side first. Uh, goes in the hole, slides under there, levered against that, and then we work our thing into the hole. <sighs> into the hole it should go there okay that's our new wire retaining clip installed now two bolts on the back side this one's done okay i tighten the two rear bolts on the back of the caliper everything's ready to go 
but it's important to pump the brakes a few times just to set the pads and to move the piston tight and keep the pads tight to the disc. Also, pull the emergency brake a few times and that should take up any slack in the system for when you first get driving this vehicle. Okay. Okay, looks like the brake job is just about done. Uh, thanks to Liam, I got done pretty quickly and I did the other side very fast because now I know what to do. Um, so basically you've got to make sure you tighten up the caliper bolts to the proper foot pounds. I'll list that below in the description. You've got to make sure your wire retainer is on, make sure your pads are in properly. Also it's a good idea to lubricate the surfaces of the pad where it touches the metal of the bracket, like for example in there, in there, with special uh, brake disc lubricant that you can buy at the store. And also I put a little bit of anti-seize on the uh, caliper bolts just to make sure that they'll come off in the future. Okay, so that's just about it. Once you know how to get that uh, piston back in the bore, which is you've got to have some sort of tool that applies pressure to the piston as you rotate it with the, uh, the channel lock pliers. So you've got to find something that'll do that and that'll make the job easy. Once that's in, the rest of the job is actually very easy to do. Okay, we got the job done. That's how you install the rear disc brake pads on a Mazda uh, 2009 Mazda 5. So there you go. So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.